In Big Brother, there are plenty of staple competitions that fans get excited for each and every year. The Wall Comp, Zingbot, and Otev have always been very popular, but my personal favorite has always been the Prize Swap, also known by its government name as the Yankee Swap. This competition, which is typically played as a veto, is a comp in which the six players compete across five rounds. Whoever scores the lowest in each round is eliminated and subsequently given either a prize or a punishment. But in a weird twist of fate, the first person eliminated is always awarded the power of veto. What? How does that work? Well, as the name suggests, this competition is a prize swap. Every time a player is eliminated, they can either choose to keep their prize or they can swap prizes with any of the already eliminated players in order to get something more desirable. This typically leads to a few fun grudges throughout the comp that sometimes have long-lasting implications on the game and it also creates a really unique dynamic because it's one of the only competitions where you can win the veto without necessarily coming in first place. This competition was introduced in Big Brother 8 and it has been featured in every season since and we're gonna go over every single one. So without further ado, here is the complete and wild history of the prize swapping competition in Big Brother. I gotta take the five stack. Are you serious? What are you doing? He's definitely not a team player, is he? As I mentioned, the first time the Yankee Swap was introduced was back in Big Brother 8. This veto was a curling competition, but it's a really weird case because it's the only example where the veto was not predetermined to be the first prize unwrapped. On top of this, it also had the added rule that you had to swap prizes with someone before you opened your own. This is the only time that this comp has had this set of rules, and what came from this was a pretty unlikely outcome, where the veto prize was actually never picked by the first five eliminated players, meaning that nobody was inclined to ever switch their prizes at any point, which ultimately meant that we ended up with a prize swap competition where nobody ended up switching prizes. The results of this competition are a clear outlier, but that doesn't mean it was useless. One Big Brother staple that arose from this was the Unitard punishment, which was fabulously won by Jen Johnson in the Unitard would then be featured in every prize swap competition from here on out. So for those that are familiar with Big Brother Unitards, this is where it was born. Oh! It's a personality. Oh my god, I wanted this! <laughs> I so wanted a Unitard! Please don't steal this from me, I really would be sad. <laughs> I don't see anybody taking that away from her, do you? It's a plasma TV. Yay! I didn't care, I wanted a TV. I want to stay in the house. In Big Brother 9, the prize swapping competition was billiards themed, and unlike future prize swaps, this one was loaded with top tier rewards. There was a slot pass, a letter from home, $10,000, and a new motorcycle. I'd be foaming at the mouth to play in this comp. In the comp, we saw some really nice heartfelt moments as Adam won the $10,000, but he traded it with Sheila because he knew that she needed the money more. It was a feel good moment, that was completely ripped away a few moments later when Ryan, the winner of the competition, took the $10,000 from Sheila and gave her a unitard instead. This crushed Sheila, and it's a good indicator of how this competition can create new grudges out of greed, which is why I like the comp so much. This also was the first time that the winner of the competition didn't actually win the veto. Ryan came in first place, but he wanted the money more, which left Chelsea with the veto, and the idea that the winner doesn't necessarily win the power is another reason why I like this comp so much. $10,000. I'll trade it for a brand new motorcycle. Woo! I didn't keep $10,000, I gave it to Sheila. Um, she needs the money, she's a single mother. Yeah, I was just like blown away. I was like, you're giving me $10,000? You didn't have to do that. It spoke words to me. I know, you need the money more than I did. Oh yeah! <laughs> the unitard! The unitard! <laughs> I want the 10G! He took the $10,000 from me and gave me Jen's outfit. I, I let Chelsea just hold on to that veto. That was fine. She can have that. You know, I wasn't in any danger. I didn't need it. So I can use that 10 Gs a lot more than I could use that veto. The prize swap is already a tense competition on its own, but it was made 30 times more intense in Big Brother 10 because this veto comp happened right after Keisha's birthday. 
This variation was hockey themed, and right off the bat, Memphis almost hit Rennie with his puck, which was hilarious. April won a really unique and interesting prize of $10,000 split up into 10 gold bars worth $1,000 each, which she could then use as bargaining chips throughout the season, or she could keep them to herself. It's not often that you get currency in the Big Brother house, and I thought this prize was really cool. So naturally, Big Brother never brought it back. As for the big shocker of the competition, Libra won, but instead of going for the veto, she went for Michelle's Hawaiian vacation and gave her a unitard instead, which not only meant that Jerry was the player who ended up with the veto, but it also gave us one of my favorite diary rooms ever. God, I love this competition so fucking much. Memphis, you missed the net and almost hit me. I didn't have a clue in the world what the hell I was doing out there. If anything, you could kind of relate it to like miniature golfing. I mean, I don't golf because, I don't know, my back's too big maybe. A unitard! You have earned the right to wear Jen and Sheila's used red unitard. I'm gonna get the Hawaiian surprise. Sorry, Michelle. How did everybody make out and I got the shaft? $10,000 and this is what I get? Look, it's a leotard. We wore it as a joke. I don't you care. Wore... Everybody cut something. You got a letter from home. I get a leotard by a mother who should get her kids taken away because she's a and horse slut skink. This is what you're getting for the rest of the DRs, right here. Big Brother 11 swap comp was, oddly enough, the only variation that ended up being an HOH comp. Originally, it was supposed to be a veto, but after Shima was expelled and that round ended before the veto happened, the producers just turned the comp into an HOH. The swap comp was golf inspired, and we saw the players get to wear some really cool pants, especially Russell. The comp had a very funny moment where Natalie really wanted a phone call from home, and Russell actually traded the phone call from home to her, leading her to start crying tears of joy, only for Russell to bluntly say that he didn't do it for her, he just really wanted her vacation prize. Jeff publicly threw the comp at the end so that Jordan could win the HOH, which was nice of him to do, leading to Jordan trading her Captain Unitard outfit to Lydia for the HOH key. Some arguments broke out between Lydia and Jeff and Jordan throughout the comp, and overall, this was a really fun and action-packed variation. Hawaiian vacation. The next person gets that one. I want a phone call from home. That's huge, I want that. I would like to trade this for the Hawaiian vacation. I'm about to talk right now. That's the best thing that could have happened to me right now. <laughs> Thanks, Rosa. I didn't do it for you, I took the trip. So my parents can have it. Keep crying. It's down to Jordan and Jeff. You want HOH, what do you want? I want HOH, okay. I want to see my phone. String you along and then f at the end. What do you think you're still doing here? You didn't yeah, do what? Okay. Who the crap time. power that America handed you? Send me to jury house. Won't get my vote. Jordan, you will. I want to trade for H O H. Be a puppet. Be a puppet, Jordan. It's cool. Some hoes get cut at the end. It's cool. Lydia. Dude, watch when you call people. Yeah, Jeff, yeah. Jeff, Jeff, what? Jeff, what? You want to get into it? We'll get Jeff, into it right now. What you guys did to Shima was. What you did to Jesse was. Take it easy, Mrs. Roper. You look real classy. Yeah, I don't give a. Big Brother 12 swap comp took place right in the midst of the Rachel Kristen war, which should have led to a pretty exciting competition, but honestly, not too much happened here. Everyone was so focused on winning the pinball inspired comp that barely anyone was talking throughout it. However, there were of course a few funny moments. Brittany had some great confessionals, the wizard costumes were goofy, and there was that great moment of Reagan giving Rachel the $5,000 prize and her being genuinely upset about it. But outside of that, it was fairly forgettable. Brittany won the POV, Kristen ended up getting the hippie tard, and overall it was just a standard swap comp. Let round one begin. Brittany, you're up first. Brittany, you are up next. Why do you have to be so dramatic? You're a homo sapien, Brendan. You're not a wizard. It's getting crazy in this house now. No one's talking, no one's looking at each other. You can cut the tension with a machete. $5,000. I will trade Rachel $5,000 for the veto Please ticket. No, I'm, I'm happy to do it. No. What is he doing? I don't want a $5,000 target on my back. There's so much tension going on in the house right now that people are not accepting cash. You're here to win money. 
Big Brother 13's cornhole inspired swap comp actually saw quite a few interesting things happen. Jordan had won a phone call from home and initially she kept it, but then realizing that Shelly could use it more, she gave it up and offered it to her instead. It was another really nice heartfelt moment that ended up coming back big time in a fight the two had way later on down the road. Jeff ended up having a very tense decision to make as both Danny and Adam were telling Jeff to suck it up and throw the competition, whereas Brendan and Rachel were heavily relying on Jeff to win in order to keep them safe. Jeff ended up throwing it in the last round, leading to Adam winning the veto and giving Jordan the humilitard for those keeping track at home. It was a fine middle of the road swap comp. Uh, Whoa, Shelly missed the board completely. 24 hours of a solitary confinement. You'll receive a phone call from home while you are locked up. We'll take it. Yeah, love. Oh, wait. No, 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 you're okay. You're Do you want it? Take it. I know you want to talk to Josina. Jordan gave up the most precious thing in her life, her family, for me. I'll never forget what Jordan did. A few moments later. You should feel like I do, you Jordan. Should. You voted That's him out. Good. I give you a call. Big Brother 14 had a baseball themed Yankee swap, and although I really enjoyed the set design, especially this freaking hot dog that Barfbag had us searching for last week, there wasn't really too much going on here. We did get the funny moment of Ian winning a dog punishment keeping it, and then watching Mike Boogie's mind explode as he could not fathom why he would not take a vacation. Danielle ended up beating Frank in the final round, leading to her winning the power of veto and leaving Frank with the Big Brother Spirits hard. So overall, it was not a very crazy comp, but it was cozy, and I liked it. Now we make kids! Jen's life here in the Big Brother house is so rough. I'm just so glad that of all of the hard workers and busy bees that Jen got the vacation. It's a dog's life? That means you must sleep in the Big Brother doghouse. You may only leave your pen if another house guest agrees to take you for a walk on a leash. Keep the dog's oh. life. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Ian had an opportunity to grab the Maui vacation from Jen. Dude, I got three grand. No need to be greedy here. Um, this is bizarre, but do you need to go to the bathroom? Oh uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Go team! Woof. Big Brother 15 said, screw all these sports inspired swap comps. Our theme this year is frogs. During the third round, Amanda lashed out at Candace after she started whispering to Judd during the comp, which led to an awkward moment of Amanda making a derogatory joke about Candace, which was completely out of left field. And Amanda continued to taunt Candace throughout the rest of the competition in a really gross manner, even when they were both eliminated. As if that wasn't enough, as soon as Judd won the competition, his celebration was cut short by Amanda asking him questions to try and clear her name and throw Candace even further into the mud. At the end of it all, Judd didn't even end up taking the veto, electing instead to take the $5,000 from Candace and giving her the clownitard, which left Jesse with the veto. Overall, it was a fun themed competition that was heavily weighed down by the many out of pocket comments from Amanda, and I couldn't feel good about how much chaos there was because it was extremely targeted, and Candace ended up being evicted at the end of the week. Candace, what are you, are you talking about there? She's not, she's not. She Candace, why don't you shut your big fat mouth? I think you're MVP, Candace. Maybe I am. I know. Every now day, we any all day, know. all night, all day. That's the Shaniqua coming out of you, I guess, right? Am I racist now? I'm racist now. I feel like Amanda took it a hundred steps too far. You keep sitting on that mighty horse. Why are you talking to me? Because you keep whispering stuff to I me. I have not so been saying anything. Uh. Let's get through the game before we get too sassy because we still got to throw. Frau Giggin! Woo! Judge, where did I go after I got nominated? That's oh. what she said. Lie on, boo. Please yeah, I would lie talk. On. I would talk any be game a rat? in front of you. Oh, really, Amanda? Yeah. I'd rather Jesse get it any day over you. So give it to Jesse, Judd, because this one right here is a snake. On a lighter note than the last one, Big Brother 16 brought us a soccer themed stock comp. Not too much happened in this comp until the very end when it came down to Victoria versus Caleb. Victoria ended up losing, but since she was on the block, she still elected to swap for the veto. 
Then, when it came to Caleb's turn, his allies expected him to take the veto to keep the noms the same, but instead, Caleb got greedy and he took the $5,000 from Nicole, giving her a germitard and leaving Victoria with the veto. This pissed off HOH Cody so much to the point where he really, really wanted to nominate Caleb and send him home because of it. His other allies ended up talking him out of it, but it certainly stirred up some drama, which was something at least. The finals are Caleb versus Victoria? $5,000. Do you want it? Think what's best for your game, Victoria. Don't worry about anything else. Nicole, congrats for 5000 I got to take the five stack. Are you serious? What are you doing? He's definitely not a team player, is he? Big Brother 17 brought us a medieval-themed catapult swap comp and nothing happened here. James came in first and took the veto to ensure that Shelly and Clay stayed on the block, Jackie was given the armor tard, and that's about it. We can move on. As much as I would love the knight in shining armor, I already have one in Clay. So Jackie, I would love to take your power of veto. Oh! <laughs> Jackie will make a good humility card winner. Big Brother 18 combined the swap comp and Zingbot in order to give us an electoral themed veto challenge, but once again, not much happened. Victor came in first and took the veto to guarantee that Polly remained on the block. Corey was given the Patriot Hard, and although I actually did like both the Secret Service missions and Polly's Apple Pie punishment, there wasn't too much to enjoy from this outside of maybe the fact that this led to Polly's breakdown in the next episode, but even that was kind of sad in retrospect. Next. I'm sorry, Polly. You've scored a zero. Yes! He's off the board! I'm not worried anymore! You're done! You're finito! El Dono! Patriot Shred. Big Brother 19 was bringing in the brand deals and gave us an Outback Steakhouse themed swap comp. The stakes for this competition were next to none because literally every player competing was in on the plan to backdoor Cody, so it shouldn't have even mattered who won. But surprisingly, a lot actually happened during the comp. There was a twist at this point of the season that added in a third nominee for the week. However, if that third player had the veto used on them, there would be no replacement for that player. Matt was the third nominee, so even though he was in on the plan to backdoor Cody, if he won the veto and used it on himself, there would be no replacement and Cody would be safe. Well, after Matt got eliminated in the fourth round, we saw him get the extreme attard punishment and he actually traded it with Jason for the veto, which caused a little bit of unrest in the moment. This brought the comp down to just Alex and Elena, and before the round started, they each agreed to not give each other a punishment. So no matter what happened, one of them would take a prize, the other player would take the veto, they'd use the veto to take Elena off the block, Cody would be nominated in her place, and everyone would be happy. Elena ended up beating Alex in the final round, so Alex opened up her prize and got $5,000, which she kept. Elena then opened her prize, which ended up being a brutal hot dog punishment, and... Uh-oh. She started having second thoughts about this deal. It seemed like she kind of wanted the $5,000 that Alex had. She was looking left and right, not knowing what to do, and eventually she made eye contact with Cody. Cody obviously didn't want her to take the veto, so he mouthed the word money to her. And she took the money. Not only did Elena, who was on the block, not take the power of veto after winning the competition, but she took $5,000 from the HOH instead. How the heck did that happen? Alex was furious, Elena looked like the worst team player in the world, and somehow the only person who could possibly ruin the backdoor plan won the veto. Ultimately, Matt didn't use the veto on himself and instead used it on Jason so the backdoor plan would still go through, but holy moly, that was a really fun prize swap comp, especially for one that should have been a super boring one. So the plan this week is to backdoor Cody again. Really the only thing that could go wrong is if Matt wins the veto, he might just be tempted to use it on himself and there will be no replacement nominee and the plan is ruined. Extreme ITARD. What? Um, I'm gonna trade it for the veto. Matt. What the hell are you doing? I don't know why you even want it, but I'd rather somebody else take it from you because you're the only person that can kind of screw up this plan. If you don't curse me and I don't curse you, we'll be good. Okay, okay, okay. Sure. Elaine and I made this deal so that we weren't gonna curse each other with punishments. One of us is gonna get that veto and the other one's gonna get a prize. Oh my God! Oh my God! 
we promise. We promise. We promise. We promise you won't curse me. Oh, Alex! Oh my God. Clearly, I don't want Elena to get the power of veto because then she's just gonna use it on herself and then I'm gonna go on the block. All of a sudden, Elena looks over at me. So what do I do? I tell her to take the money from Alex. I really want the five thousand dollars. <laughs> Elena, you're the biggest, slimiest scumbag in the entire world, and I want nothing to do with you. All right, well, this was not the plan, but the veto just fell into my lap this week. Big Brother 20 had a slightly different style of the swap comp, as this was the roll the ball back and forth X amount of times competition with a fitness theme. Angela, the HOH, went out in the second round at fifth place, and she chose to take the veto as her prize, and nobody ever took it from her. Yep, Angela, who came in fifth place out of six people, won the veto this week. Casey and Brett were eliminated after her, but they both took rewards. Scotty finished in second place, and even though he really wanted the veto, Tyler kinda strong-armed him, saying that he was gonna take the veto from him if he took it, and Angela promised him that she wouldn't put him on the block if he didn't take it, so he kept his $5,000 prize instead. The only player who was left at this point was Tyler, and he knew that Angela was gonna use the veto on him, so he took a vacation prize instead, leaving Angela with the veto. We will probably never see a scenario play out like this again where the player that gets fifth place ends up with the veto, but here it is. Oh, and Casey ended up with the health nut at hard. Sorry, Angela, you were eliminated, but you do get a gift. I would like to trade it for the golden power of veto. All right, what's the plan? Hey, man. I'll, I'm, I promise I'll take you off. I absolutely promise. Yeah, I know. 5K. 5K, let's go. Take the veto. Let me have my veto. I promise you safety. Promise? I swear, if you let me keep it, I promise you safety. The veto is mine, Scotty. All right, I'll keep it. Tyler, I will use this on you. Let me have my HOH. I just went to war with Scotty to keep this veto. If I hand this over to Tyler like nothing, people are going to know that we're working together. It could be the best in all three worlds. Or I can be the stupidest player in Big Brother history and not take a veto when I'm sitting on the block. I'm taking Hawaii, I'm sorry, Brett. I got fifth place, but I still somehow wound up with this baby. I always get what I want. After two pretty action-packed swap comps, Big Brother 21's space-themed comp didn't have too much going on, but no worries, it was still a satisfying one. HOH Jessica came in first place to ensure that her nominees, Jack and Mickey, stayed on the block, and even though no fireworks went down, it was still incredible watching Jessica take down the two alpha males this week when they consistently underestimated her throughout the season, and uh, oh yeah, Tommy ended up with the Exploratard. I would like to trade this for the power of veto. Hell yeah! Sorry, Mickey. Yeah. Bling bling! Oh, hello? Oh, Jack, it's for you. It's the jury house. What was that? They say they're waiting for you. Big Brother 22 gave us a track and field inspired swap comp, and it happens to be the only swap comp that had just five players compete in it, as Ian was feeling sick and was not medically cleared to compete. In this competition, we actually saw another really nice gesture take place. Nicole finished in second place and got the $5,000 prize, but instead of keeping the money or taking a different prize, Nicole gave the $5,000 to Devon and took her Slopitard punishment instead. Maybe it was because she had never properly thanked Avon for casting the winning vote for her back in Big Brother 18, or maybe she really just felt bad and didn't need the money, but regardless, nobody had ever given up the $5,000 for a punishment before that, and it was nice to see. That was really the only fun part to watch, though, because other than that, all there is to cover is Christmas winning the veto. Yuck. Go ahead and claim your second place prize. $5,000! I think right now what I should do is take this $5,000, give it to Devon in good faith, and take the punishment from her. Oh, Nicole, <laughs> that was so sweet. Here you go, Dave. Girl, I don't think that's ever happened in Big Brother history, and I know damn well if the shoe was on the other foot, I wouldn't did it. But thank you, Nicole. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> it means a lot. Big Brother 23 swap comp was 80s workout themed, and even 16 comps in, we are still seeing firsts. Derek X pulled a punishment after finishing in third, and he was presented with two choices. He could take the veto that he didn't even want to win from Kylan, or he could take the $5,000 that he definitely wanted to win from Sarah Beth. He was, of course, on his way to take the 5K, but Sarah Beth desperately pleaded for him to not take it, and in a moment of weakness, Derek X changed his mind and 
and took the veto from Kyland. Literally, not even two seconds later, you could see the instant regret start to show from Derek, and it's one of the only times where we saw something like that actually play out. Brittany ended up going wild in the last round, taking home the win and the veto, and she had probably the craziest and most over-the-top reaction to winning that I have ever seen, and it was well-deserved. Oh yeah, and Claire won the card card. Can I take the 5,000? Come on, Derek, please don't. Please don't. You gave me the stupid veto. <laughs> Uh, don't stress, don't stress, don't stress. Oh. I don't know what came over me, but I just couldn't do it. Come on! Come on! Ah! She lets out this blood curdling scream. And now we get to Big Brother 24. The theme of Big Brother 24 swap comp was punk rock, and some intriguing and important things actually did happen in this comp. The first thing was that Indy won the punkatard, which is only important because I've been keeping track of who won each unitard. The second thing, and the thing that was actually important, was a decision that Alyssa made. Taylor was the HOH and finished fourth in the comp, and she got a London vacation as her prize. Alyssa finished third in the comp and got a punishment, and you could tell that she was eyeing that London trip. Taylor jokingly, but not actually jokingly, told Alyssa to keep in mind that she might have to make a replacement nom, insinuating that if Alyssa took her trip, she was going up on the block. Well, Alyssa seemingly didn't care, and she actually took Taylor's London trip and gave Taylor a handcuff punishment. I was shocked when I saw that, and so was the rest of the house. What's even more hilarious is that Jasmine then took the trip from Alyssa the very next round anyways. But back to the comp, we're still not even done yet. Kyle ended up coming in first place and he took the veto, but after what Alyssa did to Taylor, Taylor wanted Kyle to use the veto so that she could nominate Alyssa in her place. But Alyssa was Kyle's showmance, meaning he obviously didn't want to do that, so he didn't. This created a small but noticeable rift in the Leftovers Alliance that Taylor and Kyle were both in, and it was just the cherry on top for all of the chaos that erupted from this simple swap challenge. London is calling! I'm going to London, baby! Get a glitter shower, baby. And remember, I have a replacement knot. I would like to trade my prize. For the veto? For London is calling. This oh. <laughs> bitch. Bold. A little disrespectful. I mean, wow. Alyssa heard Taylor literally threaten anybody who tried to take that London trip away from her and still decided to take the trip and give her a punishment instead. I'm glad Kyle won this veto. Now all I need is for him to use it so I can enact a little revenge fantasy against Alyssa for making the dumbest move of this entire season. And lastly, we have finally reached the most recent iteration of the swap comp. Big Brother 25 gave us what is probably the most asked for, the most iconic, and the most legendary theme you could ever dream of having for a swap comp. Buddy games. This game ended up being sort of a dizzy ski ball with some sprinting involved, and it looked incredibly intense. After finishing her turn in the third round, Felicia fell to the floor due to the exhaustion, and even though the show didn't specifically say it, it seems as if Felicia was medically DQ'd or she opted out of competing further because even though the show portrayed that she was eliminated, she actually beat Jag that round. I don't know why they chose to edit it like that, but it was kind of weird. What ended up being even weirder than that, though, was what happened at the end of the comp. Matt ended up coming in first place, and the prize he got was called the Dumelomaniac. This prize, or rather punishment, was that Matt had to hang out with a cardboard cutout of Josh Dumel all week long, taking selfies with him around the house while also wearing what I call the Dumelitard. Now, this seems like a standard, albeit wacky, punishment that's par for the course for the swap comp. However, it seems like something got lost in the translation during the explanation of the punishment because Matt believed that he was actually going to be hanging out with the real Josh Dumel all week long. So, instead of taking $5,000 or a European vacation or, you know, the veto, Matt thought that a week with Josh was worth more than any of those, so he decided to keep the Dumelomaniac prize. This left Jared with the veto even though he came in third place, and when you combine every odd little thing that happened in this comp, it should be clear that this will go down as one of, if not the wackiest swap comp of all time, and I love it.
Hurry up, hurry up, get it up there. 47. Yeah, space. give her space, 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 yeah. space, space. I finish the round, I lose, and then it's like, oh. I did the best that I could, and I'm proud of myself. It's all good. I'm a little maniac, a maniac? Jamel a maniac. You get to hang out with me all week, taking selfies galore. Matt, you do realize you're not actually gonna be hanging out with Josh Demel, right? I think hanging out with my bro Josh would be way better than $5,000, an European trip, or even the Vita. Can we shoot Transformers together or something? Uh, sure. <laughs> I think I'm gonna keep this. See ya! You actually get to hang out with him, right? No, dude. Humilaverse. And there we go. I don't think I've ever done a video detailing the entire history of a specific competition before, but this was a lot of fun. I don't think I'll ever do one for OTEV or the wall comp or anything like that because even though they're cool, they're just regular competitions at the end of the day. The Yankee Swap comp, on the other hand, is much more than that. There's a game within a game when it comes to the prize swap, and we've seen things that go down during this competition have a lasting impact on the rest of the season, and for that reason, it's my favorite competition to watch go down, and I hope you enjoy it too. If you don't, well, then this video was probably a gigantic waste of your time. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I, of course, need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members and patrons who I pray would only walk out of this competition with the most glorious of prizes and riches and Josh Dumals. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. So now I am the Dumel a maniac. Uh, watch your head, bro. Come through, me and Josh. Thank you. Josh turned. Typically, I don't shave my boy's face, but you know, I thought Josh would appreciate a little touch up from me because we're bros. I was a little bummed at first not hanging out with the real deal, Josh Demel, but I think it's as close as it gets. Uh, I'm excited. I have to put all of my photos on a shrine to Josh. I think if Josh saw it, he might be a little creeped out, but it's just me recognizing one of the homies. Me and Josh will see you later.